seconds ahead of Ekstrom with Frensen in third. Seven times Le Mans winner Tom Christensen of Denmark was fourth in his Audi. With the victory, Pavert now has an overall total of 60 points, one more than Ekstrom. Um, we reacted very well, the team reacted very well with the pit stops when Matthias came in, we came in the next lap, um, put some very good lap times in at the start and the car was perfect all the way to the end. I didn't have to push hard, you know, for the last 10, 15 laps. The next race is at the Lausitz ring in Germany. It's the 30th consecutive we'll sellout for the NASCAR Fans race at Michigan, a streak that goes back to June 1991. The track has 137,200 grandstand seats and holds about 160,000 spectators. Joe Nemechek had pole position at the two-mile circuit but was unable to hold the lead, losing it on the fifth lap. He regained it by lap 74 when bad luck struck. Nemechek lost his right front tyre, slamming into the wall at turn three. He was able to continue and fall back up to eighth place. Soon after the race went green again, another yellow portion came out. On lap 82, Elliot Sadler lost control of his car after coming around turn two and hit the wall. Left front hit a turn. Uh, my toe is knocked out a bunch. To go to Stuart Kirby blew a tyre on lap 143. He lost control again. and drifted up into Travis Crapple, ruining the front fender drivers. and blowing out the left front tyre. Much to the dismay of the fuel-conscious crews, that was the final caution of the day. Mm. Without any more yellow flags, oh, the leaders Tony's were forced to pit and race speed and car. lose position. Alan, Jeremy well, Mayfield, who pitted during the caution, was able to stay out and took the lead for good on lap 194 when Tony Raines went to refuel. To go, Mayfield ran the last 52 laps on a single tank of fuel and was able to watch as the leaders went to pit row one by one, leaving him alone in front with just six laps to go. He held on to win his first race since September 2004, a span of 32 events. Series points leader Tony Stewart, who came the into the race with five wins and seven starts, never led but finished fifth. With the Mayfield. victory, Mayfield jumped the from seventh to sixth in the season's points race, moving ahead of reigning cup champion Kurt Busch, with just three races remaining before the ten-race NASCAR playoffs begin. James Thompson started from pole position in race one of the World Touring Car Championship at Oschersleben. The Alfa Romeo driver was second quickest in qualifying but started from the top spot as pace setter Jorg Muller dropped 10 places on the grid thanks to a penalty incurred in the previous round at Spa. 
Thompson was joined on the front row by teammate Augusto Farfus, with Andy Prio starting third in the BMW. Unusually, Thompson incurred a drive-through penalty before the race even started, because his car was still on air jacks when the three-minute board was shown. On lap six, Thompson made his stop, handing the lead to Prio. Prio was never headed thereafter and crossed the finish line ahead of Sweden's Ricard Rydell, who held off the Muller duo for seven laps. Alex Zanardi, who lost both legs in a race crash four years ago, started race two from pole due to the reverse grid. The former Formula One driver and twice kart champion lost both legs in a collision during a kart race at the Lausitz ring. He walks and drives with the help of two artificial limbs and hand controls. On lap two, Italian Fabrizio Giovinardi collided with Carl Rosenblatt of Sweden and crashed into the barriers. On the last lap, the three BMWs all pushed hard for the win. Zanardi led from Jörg Müller and Prio. Muller was in second place as he challenged Zanardi, but ran wide and dropped to third. That promoted Prio into second, and Zanardi winning by less than a quarter of a second. Zanardi was racing a champ car at the Lausitz ring, also in Germany, when he spun and was hit by Alex Tagliani at around 300 kilometers an hour. Zanardi's car was smashed in half, and he was airlifted to hospital where surgeons amputated both legs. In 2003, he returned to Lausitz ring, walking on prosthetic legs, and climbed into a specially adapted champ car to complete the 13 laps that he hadn't run in 2001. Rather than drive them as demonstration laps, Zanardi posted progressively faster and competitive times. He returned to racing in 2003 in European touring cars, which became the world touring cars this year. IRL series arrived in Colorado, close to the famous Pikes Peak Marathon hill climb venue, and the race started under ideal conditions. Helio Castroneves started the race on pole position, but didn't hold the lead for long. His team Penske teammate Sam Hornish took the top spot on lap 19. Hornish would have the lead for 71 laps, but lost it for good to Dario Franchitti on lap 95. The lone caution flag of the race came out on lap 80 when Australian wow, Ryan Briscoe lost control of his car and slammed into the turn four wall. Franchitti cruised past the incident unharmed and held the lead until lap 153 when Dan Weldon passed him. Franchitti, who won the race in 2004, would get the lead back when Weldon pitted. Franchitti went to pit row on lap 164, but his car stalled on the way out. It started to take off, so... Um, the clutch pedal was pretty soft, so obviously we had a problem with the clutch, and um, yet again a mechanical problem has taken us out of a race that I, I feel we had the car to win. How tough is it to deal with these type of roller coaster emotions as a driver? It gets really old. <laughs> Englishman Weldon, who won four of the first five races this season, cruised to his first victory since the Indianapolis 500. Five wins has Weldon tying the IRL record held by Sam Hornish. He didn't have the pole position in any of the five races that he's won this season. Well, he's also well on his way to winning the points race. He leads the title chase with 505 points, 97 more than Hornish in second. Just four races remain in the IRL season, including two on road courses. in Raymarine. Third go, were Jack Lindening and Simon Bucknell in warm-up with okay, 47 points. Have. Wait, wait, Brown, right hand side, 10 foot out, Owens Heritage, right hand side, 5 foot out, left a bit, left a bit. Fat Boy got off to a strong start on the Mersey in Liverpool, best known as the home of the Beatles, and moved into an early lead, battling with Evans Heritage, driven by Reese Evans. This is going to be my site. At that stage, warm-up was back in third place, the pair looking to build on their impressive performance in the previous race weekend in Plymouth. 
Royal Streak and Martin Marsh in Claygate Bathrooms had an eventful race, rolling the boat at the first turn on lap one. However, both were checked over by the on-site medical team and declared fine. A short while later, the warm-up team of Glendinning and Bucknell continued their great form, overtook Evans to move into second place. Also competitive at this stage was Honda Racing, driven by Phil Haynes, in a relatively safe, if lonely, fourth place. As the race progressed, the warm-up team found themselves a good rhythm, and after pushing hard to catch the leaders, eventually reeled in Fatboy Racing with some impressive speed. After pulling alongside Lister and Knocker, warm-up charged on past to grab the lead and never look back. There was a slight hiccup for warm-up with the finish line in sight. First, their communication the system broke, so navigator Simon Bucknell was unable to feed information to driver Jack Glendinning. To make matters worse, then their trim lever broke, making it very difficult to control the boat. The trim lever adjusts the angle of the engine to the water and the elevation of the boat. In difficult conditions, it has to be adjusted constantly to keep the boat under control. But despite these difficulties, Warm-Up took their second consecutive victory and pose a serious threat to Fatboy Racing and Ray Marine going into the final race weekend. It was quite a hairy race because it was getting a bit lumpy towards the end and then we lost the comms for about three laps mm -hmm. and then I managed to snap the trim off. So we were trying to trim the boat, Simon's having to trim the boat by signs and navigate all sign language, <laughs> so it was absolute chaos for about three laps. And then we got the comms going again, and the first thing I heard, they're right behind us! And because <laughs> uh, I've been going back a bit, we nearly lost it at the, the, the far end, and uh, thought we don't really want to turn it when we're in the lead. So um, I was easing back a bit. Yeah. Without the comms and that the trim, it was uh, pretty hairy, but we managed to just sneak, just, it, sneak over just the front. did it, well yeah. done. Despite being pushed hard by Honda Racing, reigning champion James Shepard and Peter Kingsbury did enough to claim third place in AccuCard. The next weekend of racing takes place in Guernsey. The Renault Formula One Roadshow went to Moscow for an all-action city centre Formula One demonstration by drivers Fernando Alonso and Giancarlo Fisichella. I win in some other categories, but uh, Formula One is always the most special in motorsport racing, and I think. Uh, you know, this year, uh, any of the six victories, I, I, I enjoy so much. Uh, I'll have a chance last night to walk around uh, a little bit. I went on the Red Square and uh, it's uh, really impressive. Um, I like Morocco. Crowds estimated that more than 100,000 people gathered beneath the walls of the Kremlin to see the leaders in the 2005 World Championship in action. The mild 7 Renault Formula 1 Team Grand Prix in Moscow began on the Moskva River with an aquabike display by the Russian champion before attention turned to the track. Rally driver Jean Ragnotti entertained the crowds with the Megane Trophy and the Clio RS before the F1 drivers took to the track to race specially prepared Megane Trophy cars. afternoon ended with the main event, the Formula One demonstration. The crowds, which had been gathering since early morning, thrilled to the noise of the V10 engine as Fernando and Giancarlo completed five laps each of the city centre circuit in last year's race winning R24, demonstrating the noise and spectacle of Formula One to amazed Muscovites. The drivers said that the success of the Renault Formula One team, currently leading the Constructors' Championship on 130 points ahead of McLaren with 121, was the result of the team's hard work and strategy over the last few years. Fernando Alonso, currently leading the World Championship with 95 points ahead of Kimi Raikkonen 71, said he was very happy to return to Moscow. The Renault F1 Team Grand Prix in Moscow was the second large Formula One show in Russia. The first, in October 2003, was also held by Renault near the Moscow State University and attracted more than 50,000 people. So far, the Renault F1 team have been the first and only Formula One team to demonstrate a real Formula One car in Russia. The Jordan team, now owned by the Russian-born head of the Midland Group, was launched there at the beginning of the year, but they didn't actually run the cars in the sub-zero temperatures. Rainy 
conditions ruled the third and final day of the Rally of Malaysia in the southern state of Johor. The slippery going during the fifth stage of the 2005 Asia-Pacific Rally Championship took its toll on several drivers, including China's Fan Fan, who nearly ended his race on this turn, but kept in control. Fully in control was Japanese driver Toshi Arai and his Subaru. Arai and co-driver Tony Serkum were looking to gain on overall leader Yussi Valmaki, who sat out the Malaysia stage. Others on Arai's tail include a surprisingly good performance from the Malaysian team of Kan Chi Hong and Bernard Chin, who would eventually finish second in their Mitsubishi Lancer. Third place went to another Mitsubishi Lancer, piloted by Jeff Argyle and co-driver Jane Black. But none could match Arai, who, despite dropping to third after day two when his gearbox needed to be replaced, roared back to take the lead and win the Rally of Malaysia on one of the Asia-Pacific Rally Championship's toughest courses. He finished three minutes and 52 seconds ahead of Hong and Chin, with Argyle and Black just 13 seconds further back. But the course kept both drivers and navigators on their toes. Yes, because quite difficult because no natural law. Sometimes the big palm tree on the both side and the many junction and not so natural road so and also road is quite narrow. We we could we couldn't have asked for anything better, you know. Um RI was really fast today and uh, really couldn't catch him. He's in a league of his own. So we were just settling for second. The victory moves the Subaru team to within 20 points of Valimaki with three more races to go on the calendar. Next up is the Rally of Indonesia. He was looking for his ninth victory from 11 races this season when he lined up for the Czech MotoGP at the 5.4-kilometer Bruneau circuit. But the Yamaha rider had work to do after starting fourth on the grid. Sete Gibinel was on pole position after smashing the lap record in qualifying, and soon the Honda rider had Rossi and Marco Melandri on his tail. Rossi had grabbed the lead by the end of the first lap, but Gibinel stayed with him, and the pair became involved in a classic duel, with each rider taking turns in front. It wasn't until the penultimate lap that Rossi made the decisive move, skillfully cutting inside Gibinel. The hopes of a thrilling finish failed to materialize. Gibinel suddenly lost power on the last lap and was forced to the side of the track with a technical problem. Rossi went on to clinch yet another victory, with fellow Italians Loris Caparossi on a Ducati and Max Biaggi on a Honda taking second and third. The only man to ever win a MotoGP World Championship, he's won them all, boosted his points tally to 261 in the overall standings, a massive 132 points clear of Biaggi. I know I uh, have a lot of uh, fast, uh, fast uh, rider, fast, fast rhythm, but uh, I think Zibana was the, the, the hardest opponent, so I tried to, to put pressure on him, to stay with him and to fight with him, and uh, sincerely it was, uh, was a great fight. 26-year-old Rossi can clinch his fifth consecutive MotoGP World Crown with victory in the Japanese Grand Prix at Motegi. Earlier in the day, Spanish Honda rider Daniel Pedrosa won the 250cc race ahead of compatriot Jorge Lorenzo and Australia's Casey Stoner. Pedrosa moved ahead of pole setter Lorenzo at the first corner, but behind them various incidents saw Hector Barbera and Yuki Takahashi colliding and crashing out with Simone Corsi high-siding and forcing Sebastian Porto to run wide onto the grass. Reigning world champ Pedrosa pushed hard and posted a new lap record on his way to his sixth victory of the season. Thomas Luti of Switzerland dominated the 125cc race, finishing ahead of Finland's Mika Kallio and Italy's Marco Simoncelli. Having qualified on pole, the Swiss youngster built an early lead before light rain made conditions tricky late in the race. Luti claimed the second Grand Prix win of his career, extending his title lead over Calio to eight points. Heavy rain during the week had threatened to spoil the Grand Prix of England, the 15th round of the 2005 Motocross World Championship. But fine weather over the weekend created near-perfect conditions for the riders at the Isle of Wight. 
In race one, Belgium Steve Ramon on bike 11 took an early lead, well clear of Frenchman Michael Pichon on the number two Honda. The chasing pack included New Zealand pair Joshua Coppins and Ben Townley. Coppins was looking to repeat his win here last year, the first of his Grand Prix career. Townley just got the better of Coppins and went on to finish third in race one, while Coppins took fourth. Belgium's Stefan Everts, world champion and championship leader, was fifth. Ramon never looked threatened on his KTM, going on to win comfortably from Pichon. A good day for the KTM team got even better in race two, as the Isle of Wight was overrun by the Orange Bikes. This time it was Townley who grabbed the early lead, with Finland's Jussi Veivalainen second on a Honda. Veivalainen was making an impressive return after missing the last three rounds through injury. With Townley looking comfortable out in front, Veivalainen became involved in an epic battle with Everts, Coppins, Ramon and Pichon. Townley went on to win race two ahead of Coppins and Pichon. This win, combined with his third placing in race one, gave the New Zealander the overall victory on the day. Ramon provided KTM with a 1-2 finish, while Bouchon was third overall for Honda. Coppins had technical problems and missed the top three in the opening moto, but took his revenge in the second outing and came back from fifth to second, sandwiched between Townley and Bichon. It was not enough to secure him a GP podium, but he regained eight points over Stefan Evans, who was twice fifth. Evans still leads Coppins by 45 points with two more rounds to go. And he's third with 505. Carson went into the Polish Grand Prix needing just four points to win the sixth world title of his career. Rick Hartson, denied the chance of wrapping up the title in front of his own Swedish fans at Malila, had his first outing in Heat 3 and collected three points for winning the heat. Starting on the inside, he led from the tapes and held off fellow Swede Andreas Jonsson, Jaroslav Humpel of Poland and Dane Hans Andersen. Who had a run of reaching 11 finals in a row stretching back to last season, now needed just one point to reclaim the world title. In Heat 6, he faced home favourite Thomas Golob, Denmark's Nicky Pedersen, and Ryan Sullivan of Australia. Golob overtook Pedersen on the last lap and took the chequered flag, but the focus was on third place, where one point was at stake. Going into the last bend, Sullivan was ahead, but the Swedes squeezed past the Australian on the line to finish third and claim the vital one point. The Polish crowd cheered a home victory, but there was enough Swedish fans to make themselves heard, and they were delighted with Rickardson's triumph. Rickardson went on a lap of honour to salute his fans, who travelled long distances to the race in the hopes that their hero would clinch the crown. Rickardson has had a record-breaking 2005 campaign, winning five of this year's seven Grand Prix prior to this round and reaching all seven finals. However, he was unable to maintain the momentum after achieving his ambition earlier in the night and failed to qualify for the semi-finals. The final itself was won by Tomasz Golov. The fourth time in succession, the pole has won his home Grand Prix. Lee Richardson of Britain finished second with Trump in third. The final Grand Prix of the season is in Italy. So, whether you're out for a Sunday afternoon ride with some close friends, messing about in boats, or just out for a gentle spin. So you stay on track and up to speed. Make sure you catch next week's Drive.